Welcome to Wings of Arrow Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, visit our official web page wingsofarrow.in. Hi guys, today we are going to see a crippling strength and its method of calculating crippling stress. So first we'll see what is mean by crippling strength. Crippling is a phenomenon that occurs in a member that undergoes compression with sufficiently short length to prevent instability. Due to this instable member under compression, it tends to buckle and will finally lead to an crippling. The key point to remember here is that longer member does not have the lateral stability for crippling to occur because the longer member will feel under buckling before it reaches crippling. Stability in an aircraft are generally provided by webs and skin members. As the compressive force increases, these mating members will tend to hold the stability of the main load carrying parts and leads to uncrippling. Crippling is just like buckling but it happens in the web of the beam when it being compressed. It offer or occurs at the support of the beam where the bottom flanges is resting on the support and the top is holding up the load such as a bridge butt. The web of these areas is subjected to crippling so the plate are often welded to perpendicular to the web, to the top flange or to the bottom flange. Test of short lengths of section compressed of flanges plates elements often shown that after the section has buckled locally which has a capability to carry a greater load before failure occurs. So keep that in mind local buckling and the local failure loads are not same for the cases where local buckling occurs at low stresses whereas the crippling failure will be much higher there are two methods of calculating crippling stresses are as follows first one is angle method or nidham method and the second one is Girard method so first see what is mean by angle method or nidham method in this method the member section is divided into equal and unequal angles the strength of this angle elements can be established by theoretically or by means of test the ultimate strength of or the failing strength can be found by adding up the strength of the angle elements and that make up that composite section. So Nidham made a large number of tests on the angle and the channel sections. So as you can see there are a few sections, angle section, C sections. So in the first section we can see there are only a angle section. In the angle section, okay, we have two free edges whereas in the channel section if we cut from between if I want to make it two angle section so we can find for each angle basic unit angle we have only one free section now let's take the square element if we get a cut on the square element we are having four angle section in each four angle section we don't have any free edges so from the study and this test results as well as a published test details on channels square rectangular tubes etc derive the following equation for crippling or failing stress of angle sections as displayed in your screen fcs by fcy dot e power 0.5 equals to c2 by b prime by t power 0.75 
whereas FCS represents crippling stress. FCY represents compressive yield stress. E represents Young's modulus of elasticity. B prime by T represents a equivalent to A plus B by 2T. A is a length and B is also the breadth of the element, angle element and T is the thickness. C2 is a coefficient that depends on the angle of each support along the edge of angle units. As you can see, for two free edges, C2 value is 0.316, one edge free. We can say that 0.342 for no edge free, that means for rectangular and square sections, the C2 value is 0.366. The crippling stress for angle channel Z rectangular tubes can be determined directly from the above equation. The crippling load on an angle unit can be represented by PCR equals to FCS into A. A is the area of the angle. So crippling stress of the other formed structural shape can be determined by dividing the shape into a series of angle units and computing the crippling loads for this individual angle units by using of above two equation. The weighted crippling stress for the entire section is obtained by the following equation. FCS is a summation of crippling loads of angle by summation of area of angle. This is how to find by means of Nidam method. Now we will see Geode method. For this Geode method for any section with a distorted unloaded edges as angle, tubes, V groove plates, multi corner sections, stiffen plates, can be followed. The following crippling stress equation applied within the plus and minus 10 percent percentage limits. The following equation for the Jordan methods are as follows FCS by FCY equals to 0.56 into GT square by A into E by FCY power 1 by 2 whole power 0.85 whereas FCS represents crippling stress for section FCY represents compressive yield stress T represents element thickness A represents section area E represents Young's modulus of elasticity and G represents empirical constant or the number of flanges which compose of the composite section which can be said as number of flanges plus the number of cut of each section. As we can see a few examples. Here we have few sections. The first one we have L section or we can say angle section. This is a basic section. Here we don't have any cut. So first we have the number of flanges or 2. So 2 plus 0 cut we can get the G value empirical value is 2. Whereas for the next section we have only one cut and by one cut we can frame two different flanges. So we can get the total empirical constant for particular figure is G equals to 3. For the square tubes, we have, we can create four cards to create an angle section. For each angle section after cut, we can get eight number of flanges. So we can frame that G equals to number of cuts plus the flanges. So four plus eight, that means G value is 12. Then comes T section. Here we cannot produce any cut. So zero cut and number of flanges are three. That means our G value is three. Here we have cross structure. 
here in this we cannot create any sort of cut so we have but we have four number of flanges 0 plus 4 so our empirical constant for particular figure is 4 next comes I section in this particular I section we can create a only one cut and after that we can create six different flanges so one cut plus six different flanges we can get the empirical formula for G is 7 this is how this geared method works based on this formula thank you for watching this video if you have further inquiry or requested video drop down to our mail wings of arrow at the rate gmail.com don't forget to subscribe for more updates for the time being take care stay blessed inspired and fly high